Year end planning to maximise the use of income tax allowances and exemptions is probably the one that attracts most attention. It's the one that's most relevant to most people because for most people, income tax is the tax they are most frequently engaged with. However, it brings its own challenge because for most people, unless you have control over the income source, then ensuring at the last minute, i.e. in the run up towards the year end, that you use those allowances and exemptions is going to be quite tough. That's why income tax planning is far better done for the year ahead than at the year end. But that doesn't mean that there is nothing you can do. Now, the context for income tax year end planning is, of course, that we have a period of, sort of relative stability in relation to the allowances, exemptions and thresholds. It's probably stability that most people wouldn't really want and could do without because that stability is represented by the freezing of the allowances and thresholds until April 2026. So that's the, the context for income tax planning. So predominantly, given that you need control over your income source to be able to do your income tax planning, let's have a look at planning with investment income, and planning with income from a business that you own, where of course you will have much more control over income flow. So let's have a look at investments generally. And of course, let's also consider earned income. It makes absolute sense if you're a, cap if you're a couple to make sure that you each use your allowances and to do all you can to make sure that the income flows in the right way so that it isn't overtaxed in the hands of one and undertaxed in the hands of the other effectively. So use those allowances and thresholds. That's a, a statement of the obvious. And if necessary, transfer the source of income to ensure that that individual, the spouse, civil partner, even children, can use the allowances and exemptions available to them. Now, the transfer of capital, if we're looking at the use of investments to generate the income in the right place, of course, is necessary. And when it's a transfer of capital between people who are married, living together, um, not or living together, married and living together, um, or civil partners, then the transfer of the capital that generates the income will not give rise to any CGT or inheritance tax complications, but it must be outright and it must be unconditional. So make sure the capital that generates the income, the investments that generate the income, uh, are owned by the right person. But as I mentioned earlier, that's difficult to do at the year end because you make the transfer now, for example, near the year end, there's not going to be a whole lot of income generated between now and the tax year end. So it's something that you need to think about with your advanced planning. Before leaving planning with investments to ensure that you maximise the allowances and exemptions available. Remember, of course, that we're not only looking at the personal allowance of 12,570 frozen until um, April 2026, but we have the dividend allowance of 2,000 pounds, which can also only be used if you're actually receiving dividends, the personal savings allowance of 1,000 pounds for basic rate taxpayers and 500 pounds for additional rate taxpayers. And of course, you'll need to have savings income, which will mean you'll have, need to have the source of savings income to be able to receive that income in a tax efficient form. So transfer of the source of the income is absolutely critical to ensure those outcomes are achieved. When it comes to earned income, and of course the only way you can really do that is to have control over the source of the earned income, which is a lot easier if, you're on your, if you own your own business, which I'll have a look at in just a minute. Before leaving investments though, I mentioned, don't forget that children have their own allowances too, and absolutely they do, but also, Bear in mind that if you're thinking of transferring the source of income, the capital that generates the income to your own children who are unmarried and under 18, then any income that is generated from that transferred source of income will be taxed on the parent who transferred the capital in the first place to the extent that it exceeds or if it exceeds £100 in a year. That's a fairly well known anti-avoidance rule. Of course, that doesn't apply if the transfer of capital was made by someone other than a parent, for example, a grandparent. Now, if you own your own company, there's a lot more scope for year-end planning. Um, so what could you do? Well, you could pay salary or dividends to someone, most obviously your spouse or civil partner, who isn't currently using their allowances, either their dividend allowance or their personal allowance or their basic rate tax uh, band. How can you do that? Well, if you want to do it by way of dividend transfer, then you need to transfer the shares that generate the dividends, and that transfer must be uh, of shares 
that are fully voting, fully participating in capital, not just shares, for example, that generate income, i.e. creating a separate class of shares, transfer ordinary shares that carry both voting and capital rights. Then the dividends that flow from them will be uh, received by genuinely and taxed by the person that has had the shares transferred to them. And of course, you can do that quite near to the year end and declare a dividend if that's what you want to do. Remember that dividend declared will be relevant for all shareholders in that class of share. If you want to pay a salary or a bonus to someone who's getting a little bit of money already, but to use up their personal allowance or have it taxed at the basic rate, yeah, of course you can do that too if that person is employed. But remember, for that payment to be deductible for the business paying it, it needs to have been incurred wholly and exclusively for the purpose of the trade, which means that Broadly speaking, the individual receiving the money needs to have done the work appropriate to the amount of money that they've received. So basically, you know, if, if you have a spouse on the books being paid a significant amount of money and they're doing very little work, expect a potential challenge. I'll be dealing with tax efficient investments and someone else will be dealing with pensions as a form of year end tax planning in separate videos. But before leaving this video on income tax planning, uh, I have to mention, of course, the reduction in the personal allowance that is made once your adjusted net income exceeds £100,000. The adjustment that is made, the reduction that is made in the personal allowance in those circumstances is £1 for every £2 that your adjusted net income exceeds £100,000. Now, with a personal allowance of £12,570, that means that the full personal allowance will have been completely wiped out when your income reaches the level of £125,140. So in between those two numbers, £100,000 and £125,140, uh, £125, then any saving that you can make, any, um, say, pension contribution, anything you can do that reduces your income in that band will in effect, saved by a pension contribution, will in effect generate 60% tax relief. Why is that? Well, it will generate 40% relief of itself because income at that level will be subject to tax at 40%. But it also will recover part of your personal allowance to the extent that that money gets it back by reducing your adjusted net income in that band. So in effect, what we'll be looking at is 60% tax relief on a pension contribution made that will cause your income in the bands between a hundred between a hundred thousand and a hundred and twenty five thousand one hundred and forty pounds to generate sixty percent tax relief. Now, if that's possible, and that will be covered in more detail in the pensions video, then that is something that is definitely worth considering.